Welcome to yoga. Today, our focus is going to be on our ankles primarily, but also it's going to be our feet. So I'm going to tell you up front a few props and things that you'll need to know ahead of time so you can feel free to pause the video and go get what you need. One thing, since we're working specifically on the feet, is you will need to be barefoot and without socks on for this particular session today. And so go ahead and do that if you need to pause the video to do that. The next thing is a couple props you may need. We will be doing some things where we have our heels extended out here. Now you'll see I have a mat on my floor. My exercise mat is fairly thick, really, uh, but I have a hardwood floor. Now if you're on a well padded carpeted floor, you may not need anything. But if you have a harder floor like me, that could become uncomfortable as we do things here. And so you may want to get an exercise mat if you have that. But if you don't, or even then you may want to raise your foot up more, another possibility is just a pillow that you could either fold your mat over or lay a towel on if you don't want your feet on it so that you can put your foot there, but the foot can be on the floor, we can move it around. Now later in the video, we're gonna do some things, we're gonna fold this over, where we're going to need to get our foot up off the floor. So where we may hold our leg, and if that's comfortable to you, you can do that but if it get, would get tired or hurt your back in any way, you may want to have a stool of some kind, or you could use a box and a pillow to prop your foot up on, but it would get your foot up. Basically, you just need the foot off the floor and you need to be able to get your foot over so that it's completely free to move in all directions. It doesn't have to be quite this high, necessarily just where it's not touching the floor. So if you need to go gather a few of those props together right now, go ahead and get those first so that you won't have to stop during our session today. And then we'll be ready to start. Now that we're hopefully ready to go, remember that chair we're gonna be in and be comfortable. We're gonna go ahead and sit back in the chair to begin with and get comfortable because we want to start by focusing on our breathing and making sure we start in a nice relaxed manner where our muscles are relaxed. So make sure your feet are on the floor. And again, if your chair is a little too high so that your feet aren't touching the floor, maybe put a pillow or a towel there. If it's too low, then sit on one and lift yourself up so that your legs can be fully supported, where your back is supported and hopefully no arms on your chair if possible. Go ahead and find that comfortable position to sit in. And I want you to go ahead and close your eyes or bring them down toward the floor just to help to remove distractions. We're going to take 30 minutes just for ourselves here. We're going to focus on relaxing. It's so important to de-stress. And really, if you can find a way to de-stress and just relax a bit, it actually, as studies have shown it to be as effective as getting 30 to 45 minutes of sleep, extra sleep in your day. So let's get that rest right now. So as you're sitting there, maybe with your eyes closed or focused at the floor, begin with your feet, you know, the practice and work your way up. Maybe you just finished class and you're, you're hot and tired. Maybe your feet feel tired or your legs, maybe there's tightness there. Maybe you've been working at a desk and your muscles feel a little tight, but start with your feet and work your way up and just notice what's tight. Notice what's tense. Just notice what maybe needs to be relaxed. And also just notice how everything feels as you work your way up. We need to listen to our bodies. They're usually trying to tell us something and it's always an issue if we don't listen. So as you do and you focus on breathing, breathing in through our nose and out through our nose. As we breathe in, we're noticing an area starting with our feet and noticing there's tension as we exhale through our nose. We're just literally trying to focus on picture, just releasing the tension there. So whether it's in your feet, in your calves, up around your knees, or it's up here in your legs, we did some squats in class, or it's your back. For many people, it's the shoulders or the neck. Just breathe in through the nose. And then as you exhale, picture just releasing the tension there just not noticing anything that's going on around us right now, just focusing and breathing in, breathing out, and releasing tension. And as you do, begin to notice the breath, notice the body during the breath. We're trying to equalize and even out the inhale and the exhale. 
making them about the same, the same length, the same intensity, making sure that we're using our diaphragm, breathing in for the, kind of through the belly. The belly should move out if the diaphragm is at work, extending and lengthening the lungs. And then we fill up the ribs, and then up through the chest. And then we exhale in reverse, emptying out from the chest, then pushing out through the ribs, then pushing out through the belly, trying to exhale all that air. Remembering that if you ever feel at all uncomfortable, dizzy, anything like that, just return to your normal breathing pattern. But focus on trying to take that deep breath from the belly up, using the diaphragm, filling up the chest last, exhaling from the chest first, then out through the ribs and the belly, trying to breathe in and out through our nose, and still focusing on releasing any tension that you feel. If you find your mind obsessing on something that maybe you're concerned about right now or thinking about even trying to release that thought just for now, it'll be there when we're done. But for now, we just want to focus on breathing in and out, relaxing our muscles, just de-stressing. Very good. And then now maybe check your posture. You can drop those hands down, maybe scoop forward a little in the chair to make sure that we're not slouching forward at all, but we're sitting tall. We always check the shoulders. They almost always need to come back a bit. It's just the tendency we have, especially if you've been sitting, to drop forward. So bring those up and back. They drop right there is where they belong. And then check and make sure your head doesn't seem to be way forward. Push that back. Very good. And now from here, we're gonna inhale up and back. This is something you need to do every day. And exhale forward and down. Again, not taking it way forward, just right here where they belong. Inhale up and back squeezing the shoulder blades together, oh, especially if you've been sitting for a while. Exhale forward and down, you need to do some of these. Inhale up and back, our chest usually are so tight. Exhale forward and down, and our backs are weak. Inhale up and back, those muscles need a chance to stretch and pull. Exhale forward and down, very good. Now we're gonna inhale up, 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 up. And then exhale and let it all go. Very good, try that again. Inhale up, 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 up. Exhale, let it all go out. One more time, making sure we're breathing from the belly up. Inhale, up, 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 up. Exhale it down. Very good. Rolling those shoulders back a couple of times. Now, we're really not gonna focus on our upper body today, but I want you to roll them a little bit to make sure you don't have any tension there. Now, we're gonna move right on with working on our feet and ankles. So here's where you're gonna need something maybe soft on the floor, unless you have that padded floor. So maybe you want that pillow now or to roll your mat up, or to roll up a towel, whatever it is. In this case, let's bring it forward. And let's go ahead and do both legs. Now, if that really bothers you, then you can pull one back and do one at a time, but we'll do some of this together now. Focus on the posture. You're gonna to wanna to scoot forward on your chair, or maybe just your buns are on the chair. All right, we're sitting up nice and tall always. Now, what I want you to focus on doing is spreading your toes way out and then letting them relax back in. Spreading them out, of course our feet were made to be able to go out and in there at the toes, out and in. Now maybe try to think of adding the breath like you're breathing in and the toes are going out and then as you exhale, you're letting everything relax. Of course, as we wear shoes all day, which most of us do, and relax, it presses the toes in. Inhale, really stretch them out exhale and release them and so the toes just sort of get shoved in more and more to the point of actually disformity sometimes in our feet. Inhale up and out. Exhale and release it down. Don't let that posture fall. Just do that a few more times maybe with the breath until we actually have to practice kind of stretching those feet out, the toes out, and releasing those back and then let's do it one more time. Way out and back in. Now we've done another one on toes and we've done some of these same things, but this is a good start. Just curl the toes down and then bring them way back if you can. Good, and curl them under and bring them way back again. Check that posture, don't let it go. Now again, if it bothers you to have both out, you could do them one at a time. You could just pause the video or hop back just a little bit and run through the whole thing with each foot individually. Way up. 
Now, just to add another dimension to that, let's take the toes, so we're up on our toes. I'm gonna do this so you can see. You can stay in the pool if you want. Curl them under here. Now, all this does is add some more weight into that, and then bring them up, point way up, and then just let them curl under. If it seems like too much, again, you could go with one foot at a time and help release some of that and push up. It just really, the weight of your legs is going to really press that stretch in a little further way up and then go ahead and come back down on them now so that the balls of your feet are touching and then up and then press down on the balls of your feet again check that posture way up on the toes and then press down on the balls trying to bring the feet forward here so you feel a stretch one more time here and press it down and now let's go back and forth so we're going to go up and roll down on the toes, feel that stretch, and then go up and then press down so the balls of the feet are down, but we're still pulling the heels up. So you'll feel a stretch there. Up and then curl down on the toes. Up and then come back here, pressing the balls of the feet down. Up on the toes one last time, curling that under. Up. There we are. Very good. Now, again, whether you're on your mat or you're on the pillow, either way, I'm gonna stay on the mat so you can see a little better, but you can use that pillow. We're gonna come out here again. Remember, you're scooting forward on the chair a bit here. And now I want you to try to do is just do both feet in. And we did this a little bit when we were working on the legs and knees, but we just wanna kind of loosen that up and out. Now you may have to bring them closer together to get them out. Or you could even do both, you know, one direction and then go the other direction but we're just trying to turn. So again, the ankles, as we're talking about ankles, as well as the feet today, are meant to move in many directions. They're a very versatile joint. Uh, it's a very unique joint. There's no other joint like it in the body, the way your feet and your ankles work. But what often happens is for a lot of the time, everybody's feet are either in just dorsiflexion all day, or they point their toes a lot. So we go in and out, right? And so, so sometimes one way doesn't work as well. So try going forward and back. But much of the time, our feet are always in that plane, just going forward and back. So while we want to stretch that, you may really feel the stretch there because our feet tend to be in dorsiflexion the most. But often they don't really get moved in this direction very often. So we can evert and invert our feet. So maybe I think it's easier to do them this way together. And so they just get to less mobile. And if they get less mobile, so much easier to injure yourself when you don't have that mobility because if you have a misstep or something your ankles aren't able to move in different directions as they were meant to and it's easier to hurt yourself and boy some ankle injuries can be ones that take a great deal of recovery very good and now go ahead and roll them in and roll them out now we're going to also be doing this later with them off the floor but this just kind of get them started very good, this way and that way. Nicely done. Now, I'm gonna move my chair for just a little bit. That was a little noisy. We're gonna to go to the chair position or the eagle or four point, depending on what you wanna call it. But what we wanna do is get this foot up here, if at all possible. Now, you can't get in, what we want is it to be over enough so that we have a little room for the ankle to move. Now, if that doesn't, you know, if this is the best, I mean, here it's gonna work because it can move. You might have trouble reaching it or here, but if you need to prop it on a stool or something to help you or a, a box and a pillow, then that can work too. But we're first just gonna start in this position. This leg is right underneath basically where the ankle is, or you can bring the foot over, but we're ultimately going to need to be here. So again, check your posture. Don't let that get compromised. And we're just gonna give it a moment because we need at least 20 seconds here for a little bit of a muscle release. Of course, this really works on the muscles deep down near that SI joint, right where the, the pelvis and the spine come together. A lot of pressure there, especially because we sit a lot. So this is a good stretch for that. So that's our bonus is that's going to get a stretch while we're working on our ankles and our feet. All right, so to start with, you want to move your foot wherever you want it to be. Here's what we're going to try. Now, always remember, I'm gonna tell you modifications. If something just doesn't work for you, then that is okay. Feel free to modify or not to use something. It's nothing to feel bad about. Many of us are more mobile in one way than in another. And we just are where we are and we're working on improving it. But what we wanna do again is work a bit 
um, on ankle mobility, but also on spreading those toes. So here's what we want to try to do is spread the toes apart. And the way we're going to do it is try putting your fingers in between each toe. Now you may find that to be uncomfortable. I find that to be uncomfortable. Now you can go deep with it if you want here, but your fingers get wider further back they are, so your fingers are the narrowest here at the end. So you might want to start at the end. Now try getting in between every toe. If that's just too uncomfortable, then you're not going to do that. Or maybe you can do it for a moment and then you need to take it out. That's fine. It's also fine for you to maybe just pick two fingers and pick two toes. It's easiest here between the big toe and the second toe. There's the most, it's easiest to get the most space there. And just pick another spot. And you can just keep moving this around as we work on this exercise, if that works better for you. And then just pick another spot and kind of move it around because again, like I said, our toes are so used to being pressed in. They're not used to stretching out. And it's a flexibility issue that we need to work on. If your fingers just, just feels way too uncomfortable, you also could even just use a little tissue. You put a little tissue, just a little separation at all, or you could use a pen or a pencil and put that in there, just to, something to create a little separation there. Again, feel free to pause the video if you need to go get a prop for that. But maybe we'll even choose just to use three fingers or two fingers. It's generally, at least for me, the most uncomfortable between the smaller toes. But pick where you're gonna do, whether you're gonna do all of those or you're just going to pick two of them that's fine too so i'm going to start with two because that may be what you want to do all right now we're also going to put that foot over now see we're still getting that great stretch here though for our, our deep glute muscles but we're getting where the ankle can move now what i want you to do is again sitting tall we're going to keep this this hand here on the ankle because i don't want it to slide around we want it to stay here to make sure the ankle is really getting the movement. What we're gonna do is take it around, but I want you to actually use your hand to do it. So we're moving that ankle around, not with, really with the power of the ankle so much, is with the hand while we're separating the toes. Maybe you're just doing two toes. We're gonna go one direction and back the other. You can go here again. And then feel free if you're just doing two fingers, and then maybe move in between another set of toes, a couple sets back around the other way. And you could just keep moving those fingers if you want. Very nice. Breathing, and then I want you to do the dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, in and out, back and forth. We're keeping the ankle secure here so it's not sliding around, because it could slide around and kind of fool you into thinking it's moving further than it is. So we're making sure it's moving through as much range as we can. And then we're gonna go back and forth, in and out, because that's the direction that the ankle can move. That is probably one of the directions that we become more limited because we just don't use it that much. Again, as many fingers as you wanna use here, I'm kind of using the end of my fingers because they're skinnier, they're thinner there, and it's not as much because it's kind of uncomfortable. I'm not used to it. And let's go around in a circle couple more times, one direction, and then back in the other. Now this is definitely going to help increase blood flow, which is good for, for everything, um, particularly if you have any issues um, that, that where you have a lack of blood flow, this can be real helpful neuropathy, those kinds of things. And around, very nice. Now, while we're here, go ahead and release that. We're gonna give it a little bit of massage. Again, that helps with blood flow, but it also help, I've talked before in videos, of how sometimes it's sort of a matter, it sounds strange, of muscles and the, the, the plantar fascia there getting kind of stuck together. So sometimes simply rubbing on it, massaging can help to loosen it up again. So start in your arch here. I'm gonna turn this way a little bit. Start in that arch, maybe just using your thumbs really around. Now it could be sore there, I don't know. So you decide how much pressure to use, but we're just pressing in the arch there. Again, watch your posture, don't let it fall. And then maybe move to the ball, I mean the heel of your foot. We'll get to the ball too, the heel. If you have any issues with plantar fasciitis, that might be very tender, so you may have to be gentle with it, or maybe you can do more. Again, part of that is helping to separate the fascia, and particularly in plantar fasciitis is stuck. But sometimes the other muscles are kind of, I mean all the weight of your body's on there a lot. And then now also come up to the ball of your foot and all across the top area of your foot there with those thumbs, just massaging it, giving it as much pressure as it's comfortable to you. 
creating blood flow come up the side there all around there now what I want you to do is sort of grab onto your foot and actually we're going to do a twisting in and out this can be a good way to help really kind of unlock some of those things that are stuck together as we just kind of take it in and out very nice and uncross you've got a nice big stretch on your SI joint there because we were there so long so we're going to do the other side of course remember if you're just here as long as you can reach your foot all right that's that's all right we are where we are but we're going to bring it up here and first we're just going to give it a moment trying to get that leg right underneath where the ankle would be sitting nice and tall and just give it that 20 seconds or so we need um, to kind of get that muscle release there <sighs> taking that breath and then remembering that we're going to eventually kind of try to move that over enough so that you have the ability for full range of movement and of course we're going to do all the same things here that we did before so again if you need to pause the video and move if you're using something else between your feet your toes you might even could use if you have those little separators that some people have to use for painting their toenails that could work for you um, whatever you want to use so whether you want to use all your fingers and get them in there you know or just a couple of fingers just having your fingers in there is separating and stretching those areas and then we're holding our ankle down here with this hand and we're taking it around we're really letting our arm and our hand do the work here of moving the ankle around and we're just holding the leg here so it's not sliding around and we're really making sure that ankle we're doing slowly is moving through that full range all the way around very good you can already see it's going to be tight getting all of this in here today very good which you know not meant to be a play on words but hey and then we're going to take it flexion and extension and dorsiflexion and plantar flexion they're both a type of flexion very good in and out holding here tightly to make sure we're not sliding and just getting that full range in and then in and out again which may be your most limited possibly could be one of your more limited ranges again we just don't move our feet in those directions very often but we want to create that mobility that really does help protect us from injury that makes us less likely to fall as well. The more flexibility you have, the less likely you are to fall and the less the injury will be often if you do fall because everything's just a bit more flexible. It's not so rigid. And then take it around in that circle again one way. And remember, you can be moving your fingers in and out. If it's too uncomfortable to have them in, in there the whole time, that's perfectly fine. We're all, you know, we're, we're in, we're in motion. We're all progressing at our own pace. Very good. And now we're going to release that and we're going to try the massage. So we're here in the arch of the foot, just using the thumbs again, trying to watch your posture. Don't let that compromise. And we're just rubbing around that arch, just kind of moving everything around, maybe kind of going in circles. And we're going to go back to the heel. See, like on me, this is my foot that I have more issue of plantar fasciitis, so it's a little more tender. But move in there at whatever pressure works for you. Just creating blood flow and trying to move everything around so we can kind of get a little unstuck up to the ball of the foot and all across the bottom there. Just moving around kind of in circles. Very good. Now, of course, you can include on your toe, but we're gonna run out of time. So we're also gonna go to the twisting. So remember kind of twisting. This is just a really good way to help break up things a bit that are stuck together. I mean, just think of all the years you've been standing and adding weight there, and we rarely do anything to try to help loosen that back up. Very good, taking that back and forth. We're gonna real quick, before we run out of time, try to do this last little part. So for this, I'm gonna move my chair back. Is where you have two options. Move my pillow out of the way. You can, if you feel comfortable with it, we're going to be scooting forward with just keeping your leg up here or down here, then that's fine. But it will be a little bit of a long time, and I don't want you to, uh, to get tired out. No way to want to put pressure on your back. So here's when you might just want a stool, or you could use a box and a pillow, anything to lift your leg up off the floor. What we want, what we're looking for here 
is that the ankle is not on the chair in any way. We want it to freely move. So before we had it on the floor, and we were able to get a good range of motion, but now hopefully we're really loosened up and we can get more movement there. I have a dog barking in the distance, so hopefully that won't show up too much. All right, so we have that right leg up. You're sitting tall, checking that posture, and that ankle is free to move. And what I want you to picture is a box here, or a square around your foot. And what we wanna do is we're gonna start in dorsiflexion, which just means it's fully flexed up here. And we're pointing straight up, but now we're gonna to point to each corner of the box, so over here, and then down here. This is my hardest one for me, to point out and down to that corner. Then straight down, then we're gonna point over to this corner, and then point up here to this corner, and then we're back to the top. Again, check your posture, so easy to start just slouching down. We don't want to encourage that at all. So we're just going to keep moving our foot around that range. Now for me, my feet naturally turn in. So for me, that outward one is the most difficult one to put down. Maybe for you, if your feet naturally turn out, you may have more trouble with this. We'll come up to this corner and here. So again, should be no pressure on your back as we move around in these areas. Move straight down and here. Very good, we're gonna take that around. Now you could choose to go the other direction just for variety's sake. It's the same movement either way and down. We just wanna do this a few times and really take it around in motion. As I was saying earlier, for the most part, we tend to just move our foot in this one plane straight in front of us, the sagittal plane and up. But it was made to move in all these different directions and when we don't move it in those directions, it becomes tight and it gets to where it has more and more trouble moving in those directions. Very good. Now let's just go ahead and take it around in that circle again now with just the ankles, the heels not touching anything. It's completely mobile. And then forward and back, flexion, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. Very good. And then maybe just turn it in and out. One of those motions may be hard for you, but when we lose the ability, you know, we start losing the ability for the foot to move in those planes in those directions, it's much easier to have injury. All right, let's try the other one. So we're gonna put that foot down, put the other one up. Hopefully nothing on the bottom there. It's off of the end, so you have full range here. We're imagining that square, that box again. And we're just gonna go around, point to the corner, the bottom corner, point it straight down. Now to the outside corner, top corner, back straight up. And we're just gonna go around you know, a few different times in that range again check your back make sure there should be no strain on your back one reason for using the stool again you could be holding your leg as long as during this time it's not going to cause any pressure undue on your back and want to get tired and you just slouch a bit and strain your back in any way taking it all the way around and if you want just for variety's sake you can take it in the opposite direction it's the same movements but often what happens with injuries and things they have to do with the ankles is we've lost some of that range. Like I, that outward in the corner is hard for me. And it's easier to fall or to hurt and injure it. It's harder to catch yourself. You're less likely to fall the more flexibility you have. And you're less likely to be as injured because the, the joints have the mobility to move in those ranges. But if they've gotten super tight and they don't, then it's really easy to break bones and it can be a long recovery surgery, um, all kinds of issues that can happen. Now I'm gonna take it fully out and in. Now nothing impeding us, the floor is not touching us. And that range and then in and out. That range and around. So again, this is a great thing for you to do, you know, more often, especially if you have issue, maybe you have blood flow issues, all of this is gonna help with that neuropathy or something like that where you, you kind of lose feeling and helping to get blood flow in those areas is a great thing. Very good. Now we're just going to head and move that out of the way and end our class here and just kind of clean up the area. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and roll that mat out and have it there or not for you. But we're going to go back in that comfortable position because I want you to have time for us to have our relaxation before we end. So important really for your mental health, emotional health, as much as anything, it affects the body. So get comfortable in that chair, your feet are on the floor, your back is supported, but you're not slouching, your hands are in a comfortable position. Then go ahead and close your eyes or maybe bring them down toward the floor. Just remove those distractions for a few more minutes. And you know how we start with the feet, we're gonna do that body check. Hopefully your feet 
feel loose. It shouldn't feel tight. Feel loosened up and you feel blood flow in that area. But let them just begin to feel like they're just so loose, they're melting into the floor. And then begin moving up the legs, you know, to your calves. Put those feet in a comfortable position. Let those, all the, those muscles just feel like any stress is just melting out and down into your feet, into the floor. Move up to your knees, up to the tops of your legs, bottoms of your legs, everything you're sitting on. Maybe just take a breath in and exhale and let any tension or stress there just feel like it's flowing, either melting down into the chair or just down your legs, through your feet and then to the floor. Move to your back, hopefully it's supported. Just relax, not slouching, but just relaxing back into the chair. As you're breathing in and out, again, as you breathe in, just focus on that area. And if you feel any tension as you exhale, just focus on feeling like it's flowing out. Now with your hands, it can be either way, just sit on your lap in a comfortable way. And your fingers, all the way up into your hands, into your wrists. Just let them feel like they're melting down into your legs. Move up your arms, up through your elbows, up, up into your arms, through, up into your shoulders. And just let all the muscles feel like they're relaxing and melting down into your legs. The shoulders, move up to your neck. Again, always feel free to move that area if you need to. And then take a breath in and exhale and feel like you're letting all the tension go. A lot of tension often up here in our shoulders and neck. Move up to your jaw. I know I tend to clench my teeth and so there's a lot of tension there. Rub it or move it around if you need to. Breathe in and let that tension go. Move up to your forehead if you have a lot of tension here in your temples, anywhere in your face. Just exhale and let that tension go. And now you just feel relaxed everywhere. And we're just going to focus on that breath, breathing in from the belly up really using those lungs really up to the chest and then exhaling in the reverse order from the chest down and if you feel any more tension you focus on it as you breathe in and then focus on just letting it flow out and release it as you exhale very nice and then maybe just dropping those arms down checking those shoulders and that posture again making sure that you're sitting up those shoulders are back and down let's inhale and take them back very typical point of tension. Exhale, bring them down. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, forward and down. One more time. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, forward and down. And now inhale, take them up higher and higher. Remember, you can, you can make it tight if you want. And then exhale it all at once and let it go. Inhale, take it up, 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 up. Exhale it out and let it all go. Very good. Roll those shoulders back and forward and back very good we're going to take a deep breath in take it up all the way exhale all that out very good bring those hands up just roll them forward and back let those wrists and hands let them feel loose very good take a breath and let's go down big breath in exhale it all out again roll those hands forward and back and forward very good and back one more big breath in and let it all out. So good. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you feel relaxed and that your feet and ankles feel loose and relaxed. Be good to yourself today and I'll see you again next time.